Welcome to the channel, and we're back restoring. Let's try again. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're back restoring the Healy 75, and we're going to be covering a range of different little jobs. We're going to be painting the inside of the boat, and we're going to be starting to do some work on the deck structure, taking some of that out, reseating it, and fixing everything back in place so there's no movement there. And what else are we going to be doing? We are also priming the sides of the boat and getting it ready for the top coat, which you can see here. And this is the first coat of top coat. We'll be doing that in the next video after this one. So let's get started. So one of the first jobs to do when the boat was turned over was to paint the inside, freshen all that up and um, make sure that everything's nicely coated and properly sealed, which it pretty much already is because we've epoxy coated everything to begin with and we keyed up most of the stuff before we put it in the boat. So this uh, painting stage process was pretty much just ready to go um, straight away, which is quite nice. A little bit of thinking ahead of time makes things like that um, much easier when it comes to doing something like this. So the paint that I'm using for this is a product by Jotun and it's called Penguard Top Coat. It's a really nice paint for build stuff, things that are out of the way that need to be highly protective. Uh, I used this paint on the inside of Missile many years ago and it's pretty much my go-to sort of build paint really. It's a pure epoxy top coat. It's got a little bit of sheen to it, it's not particularly glossy, but it's highly resistant to water, oil, petrol, pretty much anything that you're potentially going to have swimming around in the bilges of these old boats. And it's a bit of a nice kind of forgiving just sort of slop it on kind of paint you um you know for things like this where you're not getting an amazing finish you just want protection there as your primary um, concern it's really great for that so painted the whole inside of this boat with two coats of that and um, that'll give us a really nice backup protection to um to the epoxy coating that's already on there and if we take a look at what this boat was looking like before it looks a little bit smarter inside now so that's good as well this paint doesn't have a great UV resistance, so it's really only usable for things like bilges or behind side panels and flooring on the boat, um, things that aren't going to be in direct contact with the sunlight. So that's just one thing to bear in mind if you're considering using it on your boat. It needs to be um, really out of the kind of uh, out of direct sunlight. So then we're on to uh, doing some more shaping work on the outside of the hull. So if you remember from the video before when we were working on the boat, there was still a little bit of work to do on the transom just in getting that right. So I set about doing a little bit more filling and fairing on that. It's not quite as mountainous as it may look that filler. A lot of this is coming back out and um, you know, we're probably only talking maybe two to three mil in the deepest areas on this transom, but uh, it took several rounds to get it nice. So you can see that as I'm just trying to get out the last few low spot sections on that transom, I'm just running a pencil line up and down, and that gives me a bit of an indication as to what I'm hitting with the fairing board. So as I run the fairing board over the top of it, it obviously takes the pencil lines off the uh, high areas and it leaves them in the low areas so I know where I've just got to do some last little bits of filling to get that transom nice and fair. Took a bit of work to get that back to shape but it's a hell of a lot nicer than it was before. So once I get some paint on that, which I have done, you'll be able to see the improvement in it. So I went around the whole boat just giving that an, a little bit more of a uh, fill and fair in various places. Um, we did some of this when the boat was upside down, but with it being the right way up now, we've got a much better look over what's going on there, particularly on the spray rail sections, which um, you want to be seeing from the right way up, really. So then we head on to the primer. So I'm using the Epiphanes High Build Epoxy Primer again, the same one that we used on the bottom. And I'm just putting that around the, uh, around the top sides of the boat. Use the brush for these little spray rail areas and then used the Anza roller, which is a couple of people asked about the roller that I used on the um, on the top coat for the bottom. It's a product made by Anza, a little um, felt flock roller. It's really nice actually. It doesn't have any hair bristle loss, which some of the other flock rollers do. So um, I definitely recommend that. It's a good product. So go around the whole boat with the epoxy primer. I tend to nearly every every time I use this epoxy primer, I do two coats straight in the same session. I work around the boat, and by the time you've gone around the boat, 
usually the, it's the case that the epoxy is starting to set up you can pretty much just run your hand over it and um, you'll obviously put light scratches in the surface but it certainly won't come off on your hand it sets up really quick this stuff but it's still got quite a long pot life which is quite weird it's still sort of liquid in the tray but um, on the surface I guess because the solvents are starting to flash out of it then it's um, it's starting to cure so I do pretty much two laps around the boat and the second coat the coverage is uh, is massive compared to the first coat I don't think it would really be worth just doing one coat in in a, in a go you want to really be um, getting a good amount on there so that when you block it back again you've got um, good coverage there and um, plenty to work with so you can see the boat here, when we've done the second coat, it's looking really smart. So then we're on to the deck structure. Um, the deck on this boat was very nice looking when the boat came into us and initially we thought we're not gonna have to touch that, maybe just block it back and um, do a couple of coats of varnish, but Actually, the more we investigated and the more we looked at it, we realized there are a couple of things going on under the surface that were potentially going to cause problems further down the line. And seeing how far we've come with this boat already, it made sense that we address them whilst we've got the boat here with everything stripped off of it. Um, it's really the time just to, uh, just to go a little bit further and get those sorted out as well. The most pressing matter that we uh, came across was one of the carlins was snapped so that's the timbers that run down the inside of the cockpit um, one of those was snapped and that was causing the deck to drop on one side that was actually our only indication that the carlin was broken was that the deck was slightly out of shape when we started to investigate that a bit further we realized that it was completely gone so we made the decision to uh, to take the deck off and whilst we're there we're going to refix all of the deck structure and we're going to um, put some new deck panels on because we might as well whilst we're here as i say it's kind of the time to do it and we did make the decision to do that before i broke that piece of timber off the uh, off the bow i will say that now so here we can see the carlin um, as you look down you can see a little flat spot in it where the brake is it's just where this timber comes across and meets it um, that timber supports the forward end of the deck hatch. So uh, we'll take a look at the break in that in a minute. Initially, I was just gonna take all the deck beams out, re-glue them in place, there's nothing wrong with them, they're perfectly fine to go back in, but they're just kind of pocket hole screwed effectively into the shear line on this boat and not glued particularly well, it's pretty old glue by now. So it makes sense just to pop those out and re-glue them in place so that they're a bit more firm and they're gonna last um, a good bit longer so we unscrew those just mark that position with some masking tape and they get put back in with some thickened epoxy So once I'd done the deck beams, we're then on to taking out the carlins. And the carlins are fixed to the side of the boat with these little blocks, little softwood blocks that run all the way along. So you can see it's just a case of working down those, backing the screws out, which came out quite nicely. Breaking the old glue joints, which didn't take a lot of persuasion. They're, um, they're pretty well, pretty brittle, those old glue joints in boats of this sort of age. So they, they break apart without very much resistance at all. And here you can see the repair that was on that broken carlin. So a little piece of plywood on the back side of it. And um, just underlying there was a little hairline crack, which you couldn't really see uh, too well. But as we started to get it out, you could see that there was almost a complete failure there. So as I say, if we'd have just put the boat back together at this stage, this would have almost certainly raised its head um, 
within a few months of using the boat. So it's definitely a good time to do it now. And actually these carlins have quite a key role in strengthening the side of this boat. And um, I see this quite a lot with these old boats actually. The deck is a bit overlooked really in, um, in its role that it plays. It actually does a lot to stiffen up the structure of this boat. And um, this is one of the reasons I got to the point of priming the boat and then as I was fairing it, I was thinking, okay, the sides of this are flopping around quite a lot, really. So we need to do the deck structure to stiffen everything back up again before we proceed with um, the final paint process. So we put um, some new carlins in place and sprung them in. Uh, they were a little bit thicker than the original ones, just a couple of mil to give some extra stiffness to this uh, area of the boat. And um, as I say, this actually plays quite a key role in the... Um, the general stiffness of the of the whole boat structure it's stopping the top from flopping around and the sides from moving so um it's uh, it's quite important that this is a good strong element of the boat almost as important as the bottom really i would say so i took measurements from the carlins to the outside of the shear line and of course as it always was with boats, none of them were the same. So what I did was I uh, evened all of these up and I found a measurement that was kind of an average of, of everything that I found so we can get a nice fair line back to the insides of those carlins and um, sprung those into shape with a couple of clamps and then I drew up some new blocks that were gonna replace the original softwood ones and go in place. So just put them on the top, scribe them underneath with a pencil and then cut them to size on the bandsaw And then it's just a case of uh, trimming in the last little bits of the edges with a block plane. So these just incline slightly because the deck has a slight camber to it in this area. So uh, just dialing in the last little bit of that angle with a block plane just to get it roughly right. The deck doesn't actually sit on these blocks. It's slightly above it. And it really just rides from the carlin to the shear line timber. They want to be roughly the right angle, of course so they don't get in the way when it comes to trimming the carlins down. So those get epoxied in place and they've got a little, um, little cleat timber that sits underneath them just to support the vertical plane of that carlin as well. Then they've got a little rebate on the back side. So there's some uh, ceiling boards that fit up into these carlins that cover the, the inside trim of the boat. So um, we wanna cut a little rebate back in that for the um, for the ceiling boards to fit into. So I'm just doing that with a, uh, a router with a rebate cutter on. And then on their internal finished edges they're just rounded over so I'm using my little trim router here with a um, with a small round over bit and just softening all the edges that are exposed once the um, once it's finished these are actually upholstered these um, these carlins and I wonder if they were finished wood originally because they were done in mahogany so they were quite nice looking originally and they were rounded on the internal edges so some of the boats may have not had upholstered ones I'm not sure so you can see me just gluing a little cleat in there underneath the block that spans between the two of those. I'm just putting a new um, king plank in the deck as well. So this was actually a piece of plywood when I took the deck off. This was a bit of, um, I think it was 12 mil ply that just fell to pieces really when we, uh, when we removed the deck. So that doesn't really want to be plywood. Yeah, it wanted to go back as a solid timber, so I put a piece of sapele in there and glued that down in place.
Then we are on to shaping the carlins. So um, what I wanted to do here was to get a nice shape back into the deck. So you can see I've run a central button that creates my arc from the stem through all the deck beams and then right down to the beam across the transom. So I wanted a nice fair curve that runs across all of those. And then from that, I wanna take a curve that runs from the center of that deck line down into the uh, top of the shear line either side. So I just run a little batten sideways across that main central one. And that's all raised up by the thickness of the central batten. And then I mark it back down to the height that it wants to be using a little piece of timber that's the same thickness as that central batten. That gives me my line to work to on the carlins. So I mark that at various different stations and then I just join the lines up with a little batten that I run lengthways between them. And that gives me a mark to then trim the carlins down to, which is hopefully gonna create a slightly cambered deck that's nice and fair all down the sides of the boat. So the, uh, the flatness of this deck was actually what highlighted the issue to us here because we noticed that uh, one side was dropped and it didn't quite look right. So that's what made us investigate where the breakage was in the deck. And that obviously led on to us then reinstating pretty much most of the deck structure. So trim that in with a block plane, sighting down it just to make sure that things are looking nice and fair. We'll dial in the last little sections of this when we actually put the deck panels on. We're going to cut some new plywood panels for this boat and as we lay them we'll be able to get a better feel for what the camera's doing. But um, as you can see, sighting down the line of it, it's looking pretty good and it's pretty fair and it's um, certainly a lot stronger and more rigid than it was. So once all of that is glued back into place and the boat is nice and firm and not flopping around quite so much, I can now get back onto the painting process. So that's just a case of blocking down the primer that I put on before, get that nice and flat and just working out the last few little bits and defects. And following on from that, we'll be on to doing the paint, which is what you can see next to me here. So that is about all we're covering in this video for now. In the next video, as I said, we're going to get on to doing the paint on the sides of the boat, which you can see here, the first top coat. We'll be working through that. Similar process to the bottom, we're going to do four top coats on the sides again. And then we're going to be putting the new deck on as well. So we've got to do some final trimming and fairing of the deck structure and the framing that's in place. And we'll be cutting some new plywood panels. We'll be doing some scarf joints, um, probably stepped scarfs. I don't know if you saw the stapley video that I did where I was putting the new bubble on the stapley. We used a scarfing jig there to cut a stepped scarf that gives us a nice straight line down the middle of the scarf joint and then a good glue surface area that hides beneath the surface of that. So we'll be doing the same thing on this boat. And that will be coming up in the next video. So hope you enjoyed that one and make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to see the rest of the videos and the work that we're doing on this boat. So cheers guys, catch you in the next one.